wild. It's outrageous. It's outrageously funny. M.L. Elric. In this supercharged world of hockey. He invites you to meet the crazies who make it that way. The players. Murderers Row. The wives. The fans. The managers. We're losing! Teamwork, guys. More team. They're burying us alive! Who are these guys? They brought their toys with them! And hustling of all, John Windsor. Oh, you are very clever. Leave him. That is not paid for by them. That is paid for by the people of Detroit. You might be qualified in the I'm not qualified for this job. Let me tell you something. You want to go right now? Okay? You want to go right now? kids, it's your old pal, M.L. Elric, and little known fact, Strother Martin, who is so great in Slapshot, a proud MSU Spartan, also gave us one of the greatest drops in movie history. What we've got here is a failure to communicate, and that often is the problem on this show, which if it was Sesame Street, we'd be brought to you by the letter P and the number 86, because we have a special interview with the guy who got 86 after peeing. But before we get to that, we want to thank the people who make this show possible. That's our good friend, Luke Nowacki. Oh, yeah. Overreaction is not the strategy for a long-term investor. and But you don't want to bury your head in the sand either. That's why you got to call our friend, Luke Nowacki, Pinnacle Wealth, 248-663-4748. Rational financial advice. That's what he provides. Stocks, bonds. You don't know this stuff. Luke does. Get advice. Get a strategy. Call Luke Nowacki at Pinnacle Well, 248 663 4748. Because when you call Luke, he makes it all about you, sweetheart. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associates Inc., member FINRASIPC. Royal Alliance Associates Inc. is separately owned, and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associates Inc. Woo. And special thanks to the place that you're more likely to find me sitting on a bar stool than just about any place else. That's the Cadu Cafe, the pride of the east side. They are sponsors of Room 7609. We'll be telling you a little bit more about the great acts coming to the Cadu this week. But we also have to help uh, thank our presenting sponsor, the big guy, David Hall, who, like Luke, supports all of the Red Shovel Network shows and who always seems to have a very enticing deal, which helped him get to all of those five-star ratings. That's right, 866-CALL-HALL, or check them out online, callhallfirst.com. Uh, you can chat with a mortgage expert before you go out and buy your home, get all your finances straightened. Maybe you can refinance. I know uh, rates aren't as good as they have been in the past. But the other thing they've been doing a lot of, by the way, ML, is they'll do loan uh, consolidation. So if you've got a bunch of loans with high rates everywhere, give Hall a call. Check them out, callhallfirst.com or 866-CALL-HALL. And they also have this going on right now, too. Hi, I'm David Hall from Hall Financial. Choosing between a 15 or 30 year mortgage can be difficult, which is why we offer the Modern Mortgage, a flexible term that's customized for you. 866-CALL-HALL or chat with us online at callhallfirst.com. We're pleased to be joined today by Al Sabatka, the only guy in Detroit who replaced a member of the Howe family on the Detroit Red Wings. Of course, it wasn't Gordy Howe, it was his brother who was the operations manager before Al took over in, was it 1971, Al? Yes, that's when I started, and Vern Howell was the building superintendent back then. So Al, as you may have heard, was terminated by the Detroit Red Wings. Luckily, he got enough time to vest in the pension system, which under the Illiches, I'm sure, was incredibly generous. No, uh, just my 401, that's all I have. Just the 401, okay, that's well, so uh, if you're thinking of delivering pizzas, you may want to look I think you knew, the, think you knew the answer of that, as you were saying in ML. Well, it was, it was somewhat rhetorical, yeah. but you know, the reason why you ask the questions is sometimes, sometimes you're, you're pleasantly surprised by the answer. Or but, you want to hear yourself talk. Well, there's that too. There's that too. So, by the way, Sean is back. Mark is back, and uh, and they weren't going to come in, but Al was kind enough to join us. So they said, "Okay, for this one, I'm going to make an exception." And Al, I, I just uh, I think people know that uh, that your 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 career ended, or at least was put on pause in a way that no one expected, and in a way that most people were very upset about. Um, tell us a little bit about how you started, though, and how you got to be the most famous Zamboni driver in the world. Well, when I started, it was 1971. I got hired in July, like 22nd. Uh, I worked, able to work on days under uh, Vern Howell for uh, 
till the season started. Then I got shifted to midnights, uh, sweeping, setting up concerts, uh, doing whatever needed to be done. And that carried on through about two years. Then I got put on a permanent uh, day shift, which started to uh, learn about the ice, making the ice, and then uh, driving, unfortunately, driving the Zamboni after short time after that, uh, they saw my, I guess, uh, interest. And uh, so I just uh, took off from there, making the ice and uh, painting it and taking care of it, grooming it. During the 70, it was kind of light driving, but I drove. And then uh, we opened up Joe Louis Arena and uh, worked at, I worked at Cobo for a little bit because we started Cobo Arena in 1979. So learn through the trades of everything that needed to be done. And how different was it doing the ice at Joe Lewis? Because I think people don't realize that way back when they didn't put the whitener in the ice, it was just like ice on concrete. They didn't have the glass, they had chain link fence. That was a little before your time. But I mean, the technology and the quality of the facility from Olympia to Joe Lewis to LCA had to be, I mean, is, is that is it more or less the same sort of thing or they made some leaps and bounds? Well, Olympia, we did paint the ice white uh, in uh, back way back before it in the 40s, 50s. They never painted it, just a line, so it was like gray. And uh, when I started, they already have been painting ice at Olympia white, and then uh, you paint all the lines. And it, it, but at Olympia, we had no air conditioning, no dehumidifiers, no. Of course, back then the season uh, started. And people are smoking in there, and right. The season started in October, ended in April, so the weather conditions weren't as they are now, you know. And and you uh, over those years traveled with the team everywhere. Um, how much did the job change? Because you, you said a minute ago that you, you got put on the day shift, but I think most of us saw you working at night. Does that mean you're doing doubles? I mean, how much time do you spend at the rink? Well, game days usually start at 8 a.m. and uh, stay till after the game's over, which is around 11 o'clock. So that's basically a 15-hour day. Come back the next day, whatever the event, or we had to stay over. A lot of times stayed overnight and worked the whole night if we needed to, uh, to change over for a nice show or Cirque Soleil or you name it. You know, whatever needed to be done, that's what I took care of. How, how did you deal with a family? You've got a wife and children. Did they say, hey, uh, you're doing a great job on the ice, but it'd be nice if you're home every once in a while? Well, unfortunately, my wife uh, kind of knew where I was getting into, she was getting into, and it was difficult, but uh, God bless her, she put up with me. Yeah, and, and I've heard you're not always the easiest guy to put up with, Al. Well, not really. I'm Kind of tough on the octopus, at least. Yeah, no. <laughs> Overall, if you get to know me, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm uh, trying to set in my ways a lot of times. But if I'm wrong, I would tell you I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm right. That's what it is. Well, I know from the few times we've talked at the rink that you're one of these guys who has sort of a gruff demeanor, but you also have a little bit of a twinkle in your eye, that you have sort of a sly sense of humor and that uh, you don't mind giving people the needle. That's it. I don't mind giving it. It's probably 75% of me with that needle is just joking around, making it, you know, look like I'm a mean guy or something. Well, I could use some help with Sean while you're here, because this guy, somebody needs to put him in his well, place. Here's my question. Can you take the needle in? Oh, yeah. That's always the yeah. key, right? Yeah, I've taken a lot of it, believe C me. Could you explain to this guy over here how to take the needle? See, I, what do I tell you, Al? This guy, right away, man. A lot of players gave me a lot of uh, grief too, so it's not. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a lot of ball busting in the locker room. It's it's sort of like when you're when you're doing a job with cops. It's it's always somebody trying to get you the same one up, and then and it's always the same jokes over and over again. Working hard, hardly working. You know, say, ah, that was that was funny the first 15 times, but. Uh, but after all this time, after all this dedication, after all this hard work, after all this sacrifice, a lot of us were shocked to see that, uh, that it's over. And you're the last guy, to my knowledge, who actually has some ties to the Red Wings glory years. I mean, you had the darkness under Harkness, but then you went through all those cups. You're probably the last Red Wing who has continuous service wearing a ring. Pretty much, I guess, uh, you know, there was, Stevie came back, but like I said, he was gone for nine years. Yeah, he took a break. You're continuous service. Yeah, You're all the way through. Continuous, yes. I never left.
So and then it all went down the drain, so to speak. Yep, it sure did. So I know Sean sympathizes with you because we do this show for like an hour and a half, and he runs up the stairs two or three times because he has the biggest heart that's only exceeded in size by his prostate. So you have a sympathetic party over there. I do have some issues. Yeah, well, when you get that age, you, everyone does, everyone <laughs> spoken to, so. Well, we asked Sean how you're feeling today, and he says depends, and we don't know if that's an answer or if that's a wardrobe choice. Are you doing a full set? I mean, that's, a, that's like two. <laughs> I, you know, Sean got, Sean got me all worked up here, man. Oh, I, how's that? I, I might have had a little red ball. How's that? You just walk in here defensive, don't you? You're very present sometimes. You know, it's enough no, to, you just walk in here to defensive. stimulate me. But so, Al, this goes down like this, and I'm sure you've heard everything that's out there that, uh, that uh, I think originally we heard uh, you were relieving yourself on a pile of snow in the Zamboni area, that you may have been uh, relieving yourself when there were some kids from a hockey team nearby, that, you know, what's, you know, what, what there's a lot of mythology out here, and one of the things we want to do with this show, because it's based in journalism, is, is give people what the real deal is, and at least dispel some of the myths. I mean, we started at 8 because we had a basketball game night before. It usually takes us about two hours to do the nets and get the ice ready, drill the holes for the nets and prep the ice and stuff and got the practice ring done, came back over, redid the main one, which was around 10 o'clock. The wings go on around 10.30 for a morning skate. And there was four of us, me and three other guys. And they usually take a 10 a.m. break. I told them, go take your break. I'll fill the Zambonis up for the next run. And uh, well, two of them went out, take their break, and the one guy stayed back. And uh, I guess he spied on me and turned me in. And I, I imagine this is not an easy thing for you to talk about. I mean, the reason why we have bathrooms, we like to do these things in private. But, uh, but you're speaking out because you feel that you were unjustly treated by an employer that you served for a long time. Pretty much. Uh, it's just one of those things. I had to go, and I didn't feel that uh, I would make it uh, 60, 70 feet to the restroom. And you're you're an older guy now. I mean, you look pretty good. You look. I was going to say better than Sean, but I, I'll well, say better sure. than Mark because I got to give Sean a a, a break. Otherwise, I can take it. Deb Gordon's going to represent him in some sort of workplace <laughs> action. But. Contract employee. Yeah, it just. <laughs> oh, really? At will? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you look a hell of a lot better than Sean. To get back to Sean for a minute. Oh so, yeah, that's just had to go, and I didn't feel like I could uh, make it, and. I didn't see anybody around, and nobody could see me if they walked by the room, and uh, so I just went. That's I feel bad about it, but like I said, I had to do it. Have is you this done your it? practice? I mean, is this something that you do? No, you know, when no. the when the call comes, you answer I mean, the call. I've seen people. Okay, we're not going to answer that one. Okay, Mark, did you, I'm sorry, I may, I may have just asked you a question. For I, you, I think but. you were asking the same one, but I, I do find it interesting. So we just see what happens and comes out in these stories. And my first thought was, there's got to be something else, right? Uh, do you just feel that they just wanted to get you out of there 51 years and it's time for a change? Is this, because uh, from here, that's what it looks like. If it's one incident, how can they just get rid of you? I feel that's probably what it is. I don't know what else it could be that we know of, you know. So they originally suspended you, right, to yes. do, quote-unquote, an investigation. I mean, every big corporation does that whenever right. there's an incident. But did they talk to you during the investigation? No, I got suspended on a Friday afternoon about 4 o'clock. I walked out, and it said, that's what the lady said. Uh, Jasmine Howard said that I would be suspended for one week with pay and be back the following week. So it came Friday, I didn't hear from her, I kept calling, calling, finally about, I don't know, it was late in the day, she called back and said, we're still investigating. I mean, so, w w do you have any idea what they investigated? No, I mean, what is there to investigate? I, I told her, I said, I admitted to it, I did it, yeah. I did it, I admitted to it, what else, what's there to investigate? And you explained your medical condition at that time. That's why I told her that I had a prostate issue. I mean, I'm not proud of it, and I don't like to speak about it, but uh, I told her that, and she said she would pass the message on. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday came nothing. Thursday afternoon, late afternoon came, and that's when I got a phone call. 
Now, you're not represented by a union, are you, Al? No, no, I'm not. And do you have a contract, or are you technically at will? At will. Okay, so so for those of you out there who have an opportunity to join a union, uh, by the way, this is about as good a reason as any to uh, to join a union, because there is a process that when you're accused of something, you do have some rights, as opposed to somebody just says, why don't you uh, chill out for a little while, and we'll let you know whether you live or die. Um, Al, I was at a game right after this happened, and it was kind of flying around people who claim to be in the know that that this was this was kind of uh, payback. That there were some employees who may not have appreciated uh, the way you treated them or how their relationship was with you, and that they were just waiting. That that when this came, it's like now we got them, and then they dropped the hammer, and that was that. I really had no issues with this gentleman that turned me in and. All my regular guys will speak for me that uh, I've treated them well. We've I was tough on them a lot of times, but I, when work needed to be done, that's what we had to do. And I imagine you've spoken to some of your employees since this happened, or are you not uh, allowed to? I wasn't allowed to, but briefly, a couple of times, yes. But that's interesting. You know, you know the person that made the complaint, and you're not suing them. You're suing Olympia because they made the decision to let you go. What has happened to that person? Did he get did this person? The rumor is this person got a promotion because of this. Like they needed someone to fill your shoes, so let's use the person that complained. Do you know about that? Or I, I that really true? don't know who they gave the job to, but I doubt that he's getting it. So the other the other thing that's out there in the wind is that the quality of the ice at LCA has been 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 declining and that there were concerns about your performance and the NHL is there watching and they which to me I heard that uh, I don't know that to be true but but LCA and Joe Lewis before that was always renowned for having some of the best ice in the league sometimes under difficult condition when you get those games in the spring that you didn't have back in the Olympia games I mean did did anybody talk to you about about your strictly your job performance no no, no, that one has. My you know, job. ML, if I can just chime sure, in. Sure, this is Deb Gordon who represents Al. Yeah. Um, so before we took the case, we got Al's personnel record, which was extensive because he's been there so long. It's like 300 pages or something. Um, we wanted to look and see. There's nothing in there. I mean, this is a very big corporate entity. You know, performance reviews, you know, that yeah. happens. Um, people get memos. They get reprimands. They're counseled, coached. There was nothing, nothing, and Al knows of nothing. Weren't this would be a logical thing to say to somebody, right? If you had a problem with the ice. Well, the other thing yeah, is, that'd it's be a reason to get rid of the exactly. person in charge of taking so care true. of the ice. That would be like a real thing. Yeah. yeah. So that never happened. And why do you come up with this of all the crazy things to use? Um, it's it's it just utterly illogical that this had anything to do with the ice. And Al had you know was never told that or put in writing or. Anything. Sure, and and one of the only excuses I haven't heard for the Red Wings not playing very well is ice quality. I mean, you don't hear any of the players saying, oh, I just can't keep, you know, pucks bouncing on me or anything like that. So, again, these are just things that are out there in the public domain, and we don't raise them because we believe they're true, but because we want to give Al a chance to address them because they're out there, this is a public forum, sure. and, and we think that given, uh, given Al's tenure, and and how how much of a, a topic of conversation this is, we should try and and that's and, why it's and a clear as many of these out. That's as why we it's can. a topic of conversation. It makes no sense to people that see this from the outside. Like, okay, there's everybody I've talked to is like, there's got to be something else in that personnel file. I find it very interesting that there isn't. And over 51 years, not even a complaint, not nothing in writing that they have. I don't see how they can get rid of you other than that they wanted to. And if that's the case, did they ever say, hey, Al, um, let's wait to the end of the season and then we'll just say goodbye. Was that, it was just, nope, you're done. We'll send you all your stuff. It was that cold? Yes. That, that cold, they packed all my stuff. I went and picked it all up and uh, that was it. So how do you feel about that? <laughs> it that? makes sense. I mean, I know you're not happy, which is why you have a lawyer, but you also have some bills to pay, too, so there's some economic stuff. But just on a personal level, did you ever see your your uh, career with the Red Wings ending like this? No, I did not. I figured I was going to work another four or five years, whatever. I'm pretty good shape, and uh, besides a uh, few health issues, I'm, you know, I'm dependable. I never, I can't remember for years that I ever even missed a day during the season, work six, seven days a week most of the time, 
in the long hours. Uh, a lot of times it was overnight. Uh, I remember working a 36-hour shift without a break. It, you know, and a lot of, a lot of stuff. I, I never complained. My wife never complained. The kids, you know, never did. And uh, it is what it is. We planned everything around my work schedule. It was your life. I mean, 51 years. You started when you were 17. Yeah. Um, in mid-February, when they complete their investigation, um, did they offer you some, like, hey, sign this paperwork, here's a severance payment, um, here's an NDA or a non-disparagement clause? Did they offer that to you? They offered me a very small severance pay and uh, a little bit of COBRA, and they wanted me to oh, sign, yeah. uh, sign a non-disclosure, which I refused, and I refused uh, severance also. Wow. It wasn't much to, <laughs> it was an embarrassing. It was, that, it oh, was, it was embarrassing. Was it insulting? Would you yes. say it was insulting? Yes, it was insulting. Really? Wow. Um, hmm. So is it is it fair to say that you think this is all about something else? Oh, we... Well, we have our lawsuit going, guys. It's an age as you discrimination. Know. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. And I live, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and you see this. People get to be Al's age, and somebody gets it in their mind. They want to make a change. They want to give somebody younger an opportunity. Hey, I worked and, in radio. I've seen, I've seen exactly. it a lot. Exactly. Yeah, it's a, a good analysis. There's been a lot of analogy. age discrimination in that, in that kind of realm. I just wouldn't think it would exist there. Um, well, I think it exists everywhere. And, I mean, who knows? Uh, you know who who viewed Al as, you know, it's time for a change. But uh, his age was mentioned. Oh, it was. Yes, it was uh, shortly before the termination. In in what regard was it mentioned? He was told. I'll let Al tell you what he was told. We were on a Zoom call uh, around January 29th, 30th, and oh, before uh, the alleged yes, incident, before, the, yes. the incident you admitted to. Yeah, it was before we all went on Zoom call, and. Uh, my, our vice president mentioned that I was old. Now, here's the thing. I know there's a lot of old people who just get in that lane and drive slow and turn to the right, but that was your job, right? Yeah. I mean, you can leave the blinker on on the Zamboni. That's expected. How long has he been sitting on he that is, one? He is doing a set. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Al. You know, it's... Uh, this is gold. I don't know what's wrong with you guys. It's, I yeah, get in here. I need some... It's not gold. I, I, Would I, Lou Gordon take this from his... Co was, <laughs> Lou Gordon's co-host with his wife, right? So I guess he probably did. For folks who don't know it, Deb Gordon's father was Lou Gordon, who had one of the most, uh, I'll just say, unforgiving talk shows ever. If you were a guest on Lou Gordon's show... You better be ready, because if you weren't, they're going to take you off, uh, you know. Yeah, thanks, ML, for that. With an ice pack on <laughs> it. Uh, yeah. uh, George Wallace walked off, dropped his microphone and walked off. Frank, Frank Rizzo. Rizzo walked yeah. off. So you, you can yeah. find these clips on YouTube. I used to watch this with my grandparents, and even as a little kid, I remember thinking, they must only get out-of-towners, because no one who knows what's coming on the Lou Gordon show sits in on the Lou Gordon show if, they, if they're if they not, you know, on the side of the angels. So if Lou is watching us right now, she's he's probably saying, boy, this guy's going really easy on Al. He must be afraid of my daughter. And I'm not denying that on advice of counsel. You know, I always said uh, the, the way a lot of players say my driving is I do quality work, not quantity. Doing quality is what counts for me and having the ice right the way it's supposed to be, not just, I could breeze through that in a little bit of six minutes, but it's not gonna come out the way I like it to come out. How, well, how, how well, bitter are you? Would you go to a, I mean, there, I don't have any more home games, I don't think, but would you go to a game? Would you, I mean, are you, do you have any bitterness towards the whole thing, or is it just, this is wrong, but I still love the Red Wings? I did go to a game Saturday you did with go. my grandson, yes. What kind of reception did you get? Yeah. Uh, people were coming up, shaking hands, and f posed for photos, and all on my side, we got your back, and, you know, some guy said, we're going to start a, some kind of a club for you, uh, you know, you name it. Did you see any employees? Uh, or did they all just stay away from No, you? they were downstairs. I never went downstairs. I am so. curious, in, in the Zoom call, what, what was the context of the old comment? What, what was the the sentence that surrounded it. It was just small talk, and uh, that's where he piped out and said that I was old. Hmm. Was this said in a good-natured way? Like, you know, like, uh, you know, Al goes way back, he's he's old. Or just like, boy, Al, you're starting to... It was something about work. A little gray. Okay. Yeah, it was, you know, this was a direct comment. I mean, made specifically about his age, and then when you add to it that 
you know, before Al was actually let go, he let them know about his prostate issue and his condition. And in spite of all of that, you know, he's gone. Um, there's no logical reason for it. And moreover, you know, nobody from the Illich family, you know, aside from peeing in the drain, nobody called and said, hey, thanks, thanks so much, Al, wish you well, nothing. That's more insulting it's injury. It's so cold. Yeah, it's very. Well, I guess if, if, I, if I was a boss, I might say, well, you're saving us some time here peeing in the drain. I mean, it, I mean you're right back on the job rather than, I'm not saying that people should do this on a regular basis at their Al, workplace. Al but admitted, you admit that you didn't want, it was a medical thing, you didn't yeah. want to piss in the drain. I mean, uh, you know, it's no different than guys standing in a fairway in a golf course or next to a golf cart and how many, how many people? Sure, have it's done? wrong, but everybody wrong, does it. Yeah, it's yes. like speeding, right? <laughs> it's wrong, but people no females do. around. There was nobody supposed to be in a room. So, so I'm not that going was the, golfing that was, with you guys, but uh, that was the other thing people thought immediately. Like, oh, there's got to be a woman, you know, just because of the climate and the culture. But no, I mean, it was all guys that worked underneath you. Yes. And did they? <laughs> this maybe this incentive. Did they see anything, or did they just know that you did it, or saw that you were completing the act? I really never asked them. I mean, were they really know. offended? I guess, and I, I just I go to that person that makes I that. No idea. You don't know, yeah. yeah. I, I just wondered: does, does this person was the aim to get you fired? That just seems insane. But I, that, but that, why would you want to do that to someone? Again, you know, you can have small-minded people that are your coworkers, but it's the people at the top that call the shots. I, I don't sure. care what grudge anybody has. That's got really nothing to do with the fact that the company used this to get rid of Al. What, uh, so what is the, what is the laws? Like what, what is the point of the lawsuit? Like what are you aiming to get? Is it, you know, lost wages in the future? Right. Is it, is yep. That... So under the law you can get, we can get obtained for Al, what he would have earned had this not happened to him. And, uh, you know, damages to compensate him for, you know, the, the loss of what is truly an irreplaceable job. Yeah, Very well, there's few, only, yeah, what, 30, I mean, 32 of them yeah. in the world or in the, the states? So, you well, know. They can use his help in Troy. Theory. If you're if you're looking for another gig, I, I'll get you a number for the rink manager at the Troy Sports Center. Sometimes they flood that ice so bad. You, puck is sticking in the second period. But I, I don't think it's quite the same profile that you had when yeah. you were the most famous Zamboni driver. And still the most famous Zamboni driver in the world. Maybe more so now because you've been yeah. making headlines like well, nobody else. I'll tell you headlines. Uh, my news made it all the way to Russia. Igor Larionov having to call me about three weeks ago while I was sitting at home and, and my fold straw is, said, uh, you got a call from Russia. <laughs> well, I understand the Illiches have offered you a job at their rink in the Ukraine, but I'm going to advise you not to take that. <laughs> That is not your the job set, back. The set keeps rolling. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about who you've heard from, because and I know you pr guys probably have to go, so we don't want to keep you too long. But I'd love to hear who's called in. I mean, Igor Larionov. That's 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 pretty cool. Yeah, he was very upset, very apologetic, and he said this should not happen, not to someone like me after all the years and dedication. And he said uh, he was going to call Eisenman. I said, well. You know, I don't know if that's going to do any good. I spoke with Abdicator. He was in uh, Switzerland. And my wife, uh, one of her friends, uh, is a Pakistani guy. He saw it on the news in Pakistan. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and how many rinks do they have there? You know, <laughs> do they have any rinks? I hope rinks? they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably a couple. I think it gets cold in parts of Afghanistan. Otherwise, uh, you know, from around the country here from like uh, Kyle Quincy, uh, you know, former players and Dennis Polanich called me. You uh, scraped a lot of his blood off the ice, probably a few teeth too. Especially from Wilf Paymont. Wilf Paymont, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the wrong way to get your dental work done there. I, I just thought of a, another rumor that I wanted to ask, and I don't know if this goes to Deb and maybe lost compensation, but people go, hey, the octopus is named after Al. Do you, is, do you get oh, any geez. licensing from that? Not a penny. Never, Never a got penny? Anything, and I was promised to get it. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. Do you have that in writing? I'm sure Deb wants it if you have it in writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll deal with that later. But You know, I did what I did, and I was encouraged by the family to do it because of all the publicity they were getting. It must have driven a lot of revenue, too, merchandise and yeah. everything. Sorry. It was all Al's idea. My oh. idea, and then uh, the league is selling my stuff. And you get nothing for that. I get nothing. But you were promised that. So it, let me get, I, I, I have the feeling that it went from, you know, you're there for 51 years. And when the Illiches took over, was it a little more, uh, I guess the term would be family. And now is it just totally corporate? 
Well, it was family when Mr. I was alive. Uh, so there was a noticeable noticeable change. As far as I know, I mean, everything in the new building is so split up now that you know you don't see people as much as we used to. Joe Lewis was like real close, mm -hmm. you know, close fit. You know, you walk down the hallway, you run into the press, you run into the players, and you know, it was yeah. there. Now, I mean, we're downstairs, and you know, occasionally you'll see. Uh, you know, GM walked by, or press doesn't really come down there hardly ever. Did, did you reach out to Eisman? Did it ever did it ever cross your mind that maybe I should maybe I should call this guy? We we know each other. We maybe he can say, Hey, do you know do you know what your people are doing here, Stevie? And he says, Al, uh, not on my watch. Or or he says, Hey, Al, you get the uh, you get the Tessio treatment. Where it's like, Yeah, it's uh, not not uh, not it's not, not really times. that Tessio treatment. It's just that. Uh, He's on the other side, and I understand his point of view about it, so we just drop it. Do you think he has a point of view, or is he just like, hey, this is, I'm, I'm trying to get this team to win. We'll let these other knuckleheads run the, run the shop. Well, he's on the hockey side, which what he said, and, you know, it's just, there's, he doesn't, I don't, I don't blame him for not getting involved. It's, Are you disappointed that you haven't heard from him? I've heard from him. Oh, you have? Yes, I spoke to him. And what was that he said again? I don't know. You didn't say it before. I'm just trying to. <laughs> no, it's just he's on the other Typical side. Yeah, journalist. it was a pleasant conversation. As okay. I yeah, we had a, told yeah, it was yeah, cordial. We yes. Cordial. We had about 15 minute conversation. Oh, wow. Well, to, to, okay, to that point. That, that may be longer than any reporters ever had with Iserman. <laughs> I think, Sean, you had, what, seven minutes when he was going to retire or something, something? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, the, Which we'll talk about later in the show, because I want to I want to reference the uh, column that Carlos Menares had about how we really don't know Miguel Cabrera after all these years, and he was saying how he may be the most cryptic Detroit star of all time, and I'm thinking no, Steve Eiserman may have been the most cryptic Detroit star of all time, but we'll get to that later in the show after we let Al get back to uh, his life. But uh, we really appreciate you coming in, and you have a, a great lawyer. Um, Deb is one of the lawyers that. If you got a bad boss, uh, at some point you end up calling uh, Deb, and, and she's so well known. There. She's even very well known within Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Okay. Well, okay. Let, uh, this isn't going to happen. But let's say the Wings or Olympia is like, you know what, Al? We messed up. This is crazy. Drop this lawsuit. You can come back and um, and finish out. You know, we'll do one more year, two more years. Would you do it? I would, but it wouldn't be for a year or two. I like to stay as long as I want to, as long as I'm healthy. And I would, if I'm not healthy and stuff, I would go out on my own. Hmm. I have a lot of pride. I had a lot of pride in my job. Everything. I mean, that, that's the other thing people have said. It's like, really? They can't honor him for one last night? They, they can't do anything? It's just, see you later. I don't know about that, so... I, I was mean, gonna I guess, say a victory lap, but I'm already getting busted so bad by these guys. We'll just well, if there's a I mean, if if they're doing this based on a, a complaint like the one they received and only that complaint, they're not going to be able to. Honor, I mean, that's just the way business is. They're not going to be able to honor you because then they'd be, hey, they're honoring this guy that they're firing because of this act that he did. I, I can see why they wouldn't do it because they are so corporate. Did you did you guys think about just keeping this quiet and? Not going on a, a tour and raising raising attention and that sort of thing. What's the strategy? What's the thinking? Well, the thinking was very straightforward. Al, you know, was out of a job and it was ridiculous and he was upset and it was, you know, illegal. I did raise with him, you know, this is all going to come out now with, you know, yeah. your prostate. And he's like, it's fine. That's fine. It is what it is. I owned, I owned it at the time. I told them right away. I did it. Um, and... It was important to, uh, you know, as a lot of these cases are, it's just important to uh, not remain quiet. And, and for the record, I reached out to Deb. Uh, these guys did not shop this interview. In fact, I, I, I didn't know if they would do it. A lot of times when people are waging a lawsuit, they don't want to talk about it. I, I mean, you probably are getting a sense if you're watching this or listening to this that Al's a little uncomfortable being in the spotlight. He, he doesn't mind being seen by everybody at the rink, but, you know, he's not the guy who's going to be at the front of the band, and now he, he kind of is. But, uh, but we thought people deserve to hear from him. We wanted to ask him some of the things that are out there and, and get uh, as much of that cleared up as we possibly can. But here's the other thing that people really need to think about. Is we're kind of making some jokes here, but I'm 54 years old, and I don't think I've slept for more than three hours at a time in a couple of years. You really do need to get your prostate checked 
because if you're a man and you're reluctant and you're worried about all these exams, people are dying of these things and there's nothing to be ashamed of. You should get checked out. So I do want to say whatever the merits of the lawsuit are, whether you win or whether you lose, Al, you're doing something great for a lot of men who might be reluctant to talk about these kind of things because we all go through it. And if you don't pay attention to it, you could die. And that sounds a little dramatic, but uh, if you're not being on top of your health as a man over the age of 40 or 50, you're not being cool, you're not being tough, you're being stupid. Yeah, you should get checked out for a lot of things from colonoscopy, which I have on schedule, uh, to blood pressure, to everything else, get your blood cholesterol. Blood cholesterol. Stroke is a big killer for a lot of us guys. You got to check that cholesterol. Yep. You should go for everything, you know, prostate, uh, you name it. Uh, why not go? It's it's painless, you know. To and I, I think the other reason why, and I don't want to speak for Al and, and Deb, but the reason why this did kind of make the news is because if you go to Red Wings games and you don't see Al in the Zamboni, you know something's up. I mean, this. how many days of work had you missed in all those years? A few games, that's it. Uh, I've I've never missed a practice day, like I said, my, and my wife will vouch. We've been married almost 41 years, and I never took a day off or anything. If I had to run home once in a while for something or kids or something, and that was it. But otherwise, uh, I was there from morning till night, seven days a week. Yeah, so there's there's no way for Al to go quietly in the middle of the season. I don't know what the reason for this would be, but can you please enter into evidence the troughs from uh, Jalous Arena? Because if you think about going to the Joe to see a Wings game, everybody's urinating in front of everybody at those old troughs. Yeah, it just that, seems ludicrous that, you that know, this those, those troughs came from Olympia Stadium. A lot of them were reused. At, at really? The, I didn't know that. Yes. But it's just, I mean, everybody's out there exposed peeing into a trough, and here you pee in a gate and... Now it's, bra I don't know, it's, it just seems insane. It seems it's because of your age. I'll I, say it. Guys walked in and I've seen them pee in the, in the sink. Well, should have reported them. Well. Joe Lewis, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah well, trash cans, any I place. I like that at all. Of course, yeah. nobody is. That's what's baffling to a lot of people is why would somebody file this complaint? But it happened. Yeah, it happened. Well, Listen, this was a concerted decision to get rid of Al. Remember, after the complaint, yes. Well, there was a week of a so-called investigation this went all the way up, and there was a reason that uh, somebody up there wanted Al gone. It had nothing to do with the trough. Yeah, I would. Okay, would would a complaint like this? Let's say it's not Al. Somebody else, would it ever make it this far? No way. Yeah, there would never be an event. That just Are hit me now. There would never me? have an investigation over that. Listen, this is the kind of thing that if it happened, this is a victimless event. Yeah. You would simply say to your 51-year employee or whoever it is, hey, don't do that again, okay? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, maybe write them up and put it in Maybe on a bad day for, yeah. for the person, you'd put it in writing. Yeah. You were seen urinating. Don't do it again. Yeah. Well, and that here's, would be the That's end why you create of, a file. I'm, yeah. I'm still fascinated that you got the file. If there's nothing in there for yeah. 51 years. You and would think I they talked would to the lawyers up. before uh, we filed. Really? I talked to two uh, lawyers uh, representing the company, and neither one of them offered me any other reason. Now, normally, if I'm talking to somebody about filing a lawsuit, they're going to ladle it on yeah. and tell me what my client did wrong. Um, well, so you would that think I an, an employee of 51 Maybe years, back me off. they would find something, but if there's nothing in there. But nobody said anything other than this. This was that's incredible. The, that's what Al was told, that's what I was told. And there's nothing different in the personnel record. So this is their story, and they're sticking to it. Wow. Well, so much for constructive discipline. Now, the other thing is, if if uh, if I understood what you're telling us, you know, as as a union representative, when you go into a, a, a situation, you ask your your employee who you represented, did they ask you did the, that? Did they ask you this? Did they ask you that? Did you tell them the truth? If you lie. That alone can be a reason for them to fire you. So we always tell people, you know, don't lie. Just and it sounds like you came clean right away. So they can't even get you on denying what may or may not have been undeniable. So, so. Uh, hey, when they when so, they do so this, the question was asked if I did it. I admitted it right away, right on the money. I didn't beat around anything. I did it, and that was it. 
Deb, when they do their investigation, is that in writing? I mean, do you see this? Not that we know of. Again, it's not in the file. So it's just a bullshit word they throw. Well, uh, I'll, I, yeah. I'll say that it's a bullshit word they throw out there to act yeah, like I they don't, did the, some due diligence. If they found anything in the investigation, it did not find its way into the personnel record, which is supposed to, under Michigan law, include anything they relied upon for a dis negative decision about the employee. And they never told Al anything else if they found anything. And they never told me anything else. So that's all we know about the wow. so-called investigation. And they never talked to him. That's the most insane part. Yeah, and, and again, we should let people know we are only talking to one side of this lawsuit. It may be that the, the Olympia Entertainment has this huge file that they're going to drop on us. And we're going to say, oh, you know, okay, that was what it's about. It hasn't come out yet. It's early in the lawsuit. These things tend to come out in the wash, but uh, but so far they're not saying very much. And and these guys are kind enough to come out and wow. make their case. And so far in the court of public opinion, eh, it's looking like a it's, it's even dumber than tough. I thought it was. To tell you so, the truth after hearing this, it's yeah. just it's that makes no sense. So so we know you guys have to go. Any anything else you want to throw out there for people to know? Al, anything you want to tell your many fans out there who uh, who were disappointed not to see you driving a driving a sled? Yeah, I'd like to thank them all for all the support and all the cheering over all the years and uh, all the support. Basically, that's what else can I say? There's a lot of support, I guess. Uh, I'm not on social media, but. Uh, I've got a lot, in, a lot of uh, responses from people, and uh, even at the game, all people were coming up and telling me the support that they you know, had for me. That's and great. it sounds like you're still a fan if you're taking your family to the game. So. Yeah. Well. And there ain't a lot to watch these days, so uh, that's he's a big fan. So seven to two against Pittsburgh, you know. I kind of I was kind of upset that I didn't get to go down and see Sydney because him and I are pretty good friends. Did he shake your hand? He always did. Yes. Okay, and he, uh, he skipped was, Lidstrom that one time. I well, tough to yeah, we don't want. No, no, we'll let, we're, we're, this is a sophisticated show. We're gonna get past all it's that. It's off the ice. But uh, I know you, eighty-seven. Eight, eight, Only fans hang on to that kind when, of stuff. When he's off the ice, he's a different person, like a lot of other players were. You know, yeah, of course. Yeah. He's a gentleman. He he saw me coming down the hall. He was speaking to someone. He would walk over and make sure that he said hi. Okay, so I, being a real reporter, I asked you a last question. I got to ask you one other question. Who are your favorite players? And did you know Lafleur at all? Did you see he got a ten-minute standing ovation? I mean, who are some of your favorite players, uh, friend and foe, visitor and home team? Well, I mean, you go start with uh, like Gordy when I was there for the All Star game, and I, when I started, Gordy retired. Uh, Gordy was. Uh, Awesome, Ted Lindsay, uh, Red Kelly, you name it, and just keep coming down. Del Vecchio, uh, Marcel Pronovo. I've actually skated over 30 league in West Bloomfield with Ted Lindsay in the 80s. Uh, was it in the 80s or was he in his 80s? Uh, he was 60. <laughs> he was 60 in the 80s, okay. He was still skating into his 80s. Yeah. But, but he was still skating into his 90s at LCA, yeah. right? Hell yeah. I mean, unbelievable. And in the, in the 70s, Gordy used to, after he retired, he used to come out at 4 o'clock on Monday, do a little shinny with us, and Dick Purton was our goalie. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Well, Purton's from Buffalo, so I imagine he knows his way around the ice a little bit. And yeah. who, who are your favorite visitors to come in from? Uh, I mean, Gretzky, did you ever get to talk to him? Was he okay, or he just came and did his thing? Actually, Chelly called me, and uh, he was with Gretzky, and Gretzky told me to keep my head up and uh, be strong. Of course, Chelly also was with Gretzky. <laughs> He's with everybody all the time, no matter yes. who. Well, yeah. they, were, they were at Gretzky's daughter's wedding. Wedding, yeah, yeah down in Tennessee, yeah. yeah. I mean, Chelly, Brad Hall, like I said, Stevie's an awesome guy. He's always been good to me. I have no comment. Probert was a uh, general giant, like the best guy, you know. Uh, Sheldon Kennedy, that they went through that hell. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And he, you know, Chris Drapers and Maltby's and Osgood and, you know. We might have to hook you up with Bill Roos and see if we can get another one of those Red Wing books out of you. Yeah. I'd love to hear your behind-the-scenes observations. That would yeah. be great. I spoke with Bill Roos about it. We'll see. Yeah, okay. Well, Al Sabaka, thanks for coming on. Good luck with the lawsuit. We hope for a fair resolution for all sides. And uh, it certainly wouldn't break my heart to see you on the ice when the wings start next season. Or if you want to slum it, you know, like I said, the boys at Troy could use a little. <laughs> I'd be more than happy to go back if uh, if it's permitted, but we don't know. So.
Okay, Al, Al Sabatka, Sandy, thanks for coming in and sitting with us, and Deb Gord, uh, attorney to the uh, to the wronged but soon to be righted. We appreciate you guys making the time. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh man, the geeks have inherited the earth. What can I do that? What a dork! Is him wanting to play with us again mean that he's turning into a geek, or we're turning into cool guys? Well, that was interesting, wasn't it, guys? I want to know what you both think. Um, you know, is there something going on there? I, Somebody wanted them out, and they used the weakest reason to do so, in my opinion. I mean, I don't want to buy everything uh, hook, line, and sinker as, as it's presented, because I think there's, when you have a lawsuit, you'd go for, a, you'd go for the jugular. But it does seem like they wanted him out. The question is why, right? Is it just age discrimination, Mike? Yeah, well, we're only getting one side of the story, and maybe there's more to it from the uh, Olympia Entertainment side. That's up to them to tell us, and because it's a lawsuit, they're going to tell us in their own good time. But the one thing I think it, it's pretty hard to argue with is that from a PR standpoint, what a disaster. I mean, how many tickets would they have sold to the last game of the season if it was take a last lap with Al, you know, or if they sent him out on top? I, I don't know that he wanted to go because it sounds like he wanted to work many more years. But when you take a high profile guy like that off the Zamboni in the middle of the season, People are going to talk. No, he's a local celebrity. And as you mentioned, he mentioned, when he went to the game with his granddaughter's grandson, I yeah. can't remember which one, people were coming up to him, right? And the support he was getting, they want to start a Sabaka club and uh, and all that sort of thing. It's just, it is, it's really odd, but it's not surprising to me from the Illich, um, based on what we know about how the Illiches handle this sort of thing, right? They just, I mean, look, look what they did when all the property didn't get developed as promised around Little Caesars Arena. They said nothing. Well, Al mentions the changeover when Mr. I died, and I've oh, it just seems to be a, there's been a lot of things that have added up. But since this changeover, it hasn't looked very favorable amongst the company. Starting with the big presentation at the Fox, um, that was all Chris Illich, and there's there's been a bunch of little things. The parking tickets they've been handing out, right? You know, so naturally people are going to go. Well, this wouldn't have happened if. If Mike Illich was alive, he would not have allowed this kind of, uh, for lack of better, <laughs> for, for, at the very least, the bad PR. I mean, maybe, maybe not, but it's just, it's kind of the MO of that company. Even when he was alive, I remember the Tigers operated that way a little bit. David Dombrowski was the general manager. He was somebody that said very, very little. Now, Ken Holland was a little bit different with the wings, but the buck always stopped with Mr. I. It, it did, but, they, but I would argue that even before Chris took over, uh, Chris Illich took over, they still just had a tendency, not to say much. Oh, yeah. Well, they, they've they always had a reputation for being kind of clannish, that it was a very close-knit, family-run organization. If they thought it was okay, then it was okay, and the rest of you can all go to hell. And very rarely would they feel a need to address public concern or criticism. Uh, and maybe they're just too insular, but boy, oh, boy, uh Canning Al, uh, that really feels like PR disaster 101 that um, you don't have to be that smart, you don't have to be that plugged in, you don't have to be that savvy to know is going to blow up in your face. Now, if it turns out Al's an axe murderer and there's a bunch of you know limbs buried at the bottom of that Zamboni uh, leftover ice, you know we'll we'll be pleased to report that. But I kind of or if he were a habitual going. drain peer and people just get tired of it. But you can't you can't do it just based on one complaint can you i guess it depends on what the thing is you're complaining about i mean if you're at will employee you often don't need a reason to sure, fire somebody true. but but you are a you're you're a business that's in the in the limelight you are very well, very high profile and so you need to for your own sake have a little delicacy about things aside from the legality it just feels wrong it just feels wrong not to give him a not to give him a break or to yeah. give him a warning yeah and say hey you know well he was suspended for a week while in an investigation which i just find that just very laughable an investigation that they're doing where they don't even talk to his him or get his side well it wasn't an investigation it was no. is this the opportunity for us to to get him out yeah that's that, that was want, their investigation right? yeah call the lawyers to see like how oh, much trouble it would be if we got him, yeah, exactly. him out of here so exactly it just feels wrong uh, when I think of older guys uh, that the Wings didn't get rid of, I think of Franz Nielsen, and I would have fired him <laughs> way before I got rid of Al Sabatka. But, yeah, that, that, that's just me. Well, I know. It's uh, it's an interesting case. Obviously, there are headlines 
uh, every day, and and for good reason because you know this isn't just a regular. Not to diminish what a Zamboni driver does, but this is not a regular Zamboni driver, is it? No, but and if this was the end of the year and they're like, hey, Al's not coming back, and he didn't, and so let's say he didn't, obviously didn't want, he wasn't ready to quit, right? But let's just say they parted ways at the end, and this whole year nation, everyone would be like, oh, well, that's a bummer, and then move on with their lives. But seeing how it happened, it's like, no, this is just wrong. This feels wrong. Well, and if they were getting rid of him because the ice wasn't good, they should have totally said different. that or they should yeah. say that. But I will just tell you this. People may look at the flow chart on a, on a hockey rink and say, oh, Zamboni. In a lot of ways, a Zamboni driver is the most important person in the operations department because if that ice stinks, it really affects the way the game is played. And, you know, if he was bad at that job, yeah, then he should have been fired, but we haven't heard that. And there was nothing in the in the personnel file, according to the, I, I'm a, his I'm lawyer. Blown away by that, yeah. Right, right. fifty-one years. Yeah, and, and you'd hear I can't from make the it players. Fifty-one minutes without someone complaining about me. You'd admit, hear from the players and the coach. Maybe not the Red Wings players, but visiting players would say like, "Oh, the ice in Detroit." I mean, you heard for years from people who played in Dallas and the playoffs like, "I hate playing in Dallas heat, in May no, because yeah. the ice is garbage and we can't skate as fast and the passes don't travel and it changes the whole game." We don't hear that from any. Now, of course, people come to Detroit and they win no matter what. So, although the, actually the Wings have been better at home than they have been on the road. But yeah, suffice to say, we never heard any of that, right? Yeah, that has not that has not leaked out, if you will. May I borrow a, a part of your personality real quick as we wrap this up? I wish you'd borrow a lot more of it just I mean, to take I, the burden off of me. May I channel you and channel your defensiveness? Can I say that, Mark? Yes. Okay. So you're promoting this show and this interview for good reason. It was it was Defensive a great it was sense. it was a great interview. You're promoting this on online, and Drew, the Godfather, upstairs, uh, probably as we Patron. speak. I can smell him actually right now as we right now he's watching uh, True Crime. He is actually. <laughs> Yeah, it's a yeah. pretty safe bet. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. so he tweets out on top of your tweet that he cannot wait for this interview and to hear to hear what uh, good old Al has to say. Somebody underneath in uh, subtweets, his, goes by the name of Dozier, says that's too bad because that show blows. B-O-L-B-L-O-Z-E, referring to our show, to sure. your show. Okay. And I just want to wanna ask Dozier, Mr. Dozier, if, you know, did that blow? Did we do a good enough job for him? Well, he wouldn't know. He'd give us listening. a chance. He wouldn't know. He's not listening. He's not, you could tell him on the Drew and Mike show, Mark, to give it a chance. Could you do that? I will. I will. And, do that, and yeah. apologize that we're not channeling Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson. <laughs> but yes. you know, we can do a pretty good interview here. But we we may we may nuke our balls to be real men. <laughs> yeah. So even Charlie had enough of Tucker at that point. So uh, oh, so there is a line. There is a line. Oh, that's good to know. It's it's right at the taint. That's when Charlie says, "Taint gonna do this one." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for allowing me to channel you for a second there. So that's um, that's Sean's geek of the week. Do you have one? Yeah. Well, speaking of bad PR moves that someone got away with, our geek of the week is Kwame Kilpatrick because he went uh, on the Today Show. Oh God, that was vomit-inducing. Wait, did somebody mention Kwame Kilpatrick? Where's the ding? That's a shocker. <laughs> I'm and glad you did though. Despite and despite the findings of a diverse jury who spent six months carefully studying multiple charges of public corruption who found that Kwame Kilpatrick was guilty of 24 counts of public corruption. Our former mayor says, I only committed perjury. This is all part of a very cynical rehabilitation campaign, one that he's been waging for almost 15 years now to say, I cheated on my wife and lied about it. Yep. That's it. No, the facts are you helped bankrupt a city. You brought corruption to City Hall. You ruined the careers of good police officers. You betrayed your friends. You betrayed your people. You betrayed your oath. And you were a dirty rotten crook and you won't admit it but then he says i've said sorry so many times people in detroit don't want to hear me say sorry anymore first of all i don't remember him saying sorry ever and if you're saying sorry what are you saying sorry for because you just denied these charges that you were convicted of so i'm not really buying it um and i hope other people aren't well that's because what we ask wish him. him well let's ask him mark but the facts are the facts do you think people are buying it Yes, I think you do. I think some, right? I think people have short memories. I think he's a very compelling figure, which is why I was a huge fan of his for so long. 
But, uh, but in the end, the truth has got to come out. And anyone who denies the truth and then wants to preach the word and denies the truth, no, Kwame Kilpatrick, you know, you've lived a blessed life. It's time to own your mistakes. And for that reason, you are a geek of the week. I was just going to say, he wouldn't have done time if it were just the infidelity. Of course not. We did time for that. For the perjury, but yeah. I was going to give you the last word there, Sean, but he jumped all over. No, that's okay. Yeah, that's say okay. it again. I'm not editing it. It wouldn't have done time if it were just for the infidelity. That was the least of the things. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> See you again. There's an all night party in room 7609. Oh. If you love great music, you're going to love the Kaju Cafe, which is our sponsor of Room 7609, the new wave music suite where we invite great bands to play some of their least known songs or obscure bands who had some hits that never were but should be to get a little bit of airtime here. At the Kaju Cafe, there's always something great going on. Monday, it's the Blues Jam and Muscle Madness. Tuesdays is Funk Night. Wednesdays, Karaoke. This Thursday, Phil Prophet and his Fast Fortunes. Friday, Super Crunch, the Grateful Dead cover band. And on Saturday, there's Ish. What's Ish? Well, you're gonna have to go to find out. And to find out more, you can go to kajucafe.com. So I went to um, see Miguel Cabrera get 3,000 hits. I went um, when he had 2,996, 2, and we ran into a guy who makes this week's entry into Room 7609, and we said, boy, it'd be great if he got four hits tonight. And people are like, well, I don't know if he's going to get up to bat four times. Well, sure enough, he did. He got three hits, none of them fantastic. Did not quite make it. But the biggest hits we talked about were at the bar afterwards. My man Dan, former DJ at St. Andrews in the City Club, a man with new wave credentials that cannot be impeached suggests, inspired by the end of every show, this week's entry into Room 7609, Pop Will Eat Itself, and a little hit that you may know, at least you know the words, called Can You Dig It? Okay, let's get down to it, Poppers. Mm -hmm. 